Every day, you and I get bombarded with negative news. And just like our bodies becomes what we eat, our minds become the information that we consume. If you want to stay positive, it's so important that you also listen to stories that inspires you and uplifts you. In this podcast, we interview world-leading experts dedicated to solving the world's most pressing problems. And if you stick around, I promise you will not only be as informed as if you watch the news, you will feel uplifted, inspired, and have more positive energy in your life. Welcome to Great.com Talks with... Hi and welcome. Today, Great.com talks with Bob Franklin, who is the Partnership Development Officer for a rescuemission.org. And what kind of rescue mission, you might ask? Well, at least that is what I asked myself when I saw their name and I did research about the organization. It turns out that a rescue mission is a nonprofit Christian social service, social service ministry that is helping uh, poor and homeless people in the South and New Jersey. And they've been doing that since 19, since 1964. And, uh, if you're new here into this podcast, you definitely want to press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app, because today we're going to look at you know, what are the problems that the poor and the homeless uh, are facing in New Jersey and what can a Christian ministry do to help? So, Bob, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you, Emil. It's my pleasure. And again, I appreciate uh, the awareness that you're helping to bring to the general public about uh, the indigents and those who are in need of care. Because it's not just the homeless. Uh, we also serve what we call the housed poor. Best way to keep folks from becoming homeless is to be proactive and help them. So that's another part of our ministry that's extremely important in our community. Thank you for elaborating on that. And um, thank you. It feels very meaningful to bring awareness. So I just made a short introduction. Could you expand a little bit more on what you're doing? Because you're also helping people that have, you know, maybe mental problems or drugs mm -hmm. and gambling addictions yeah, and other problems. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, we're the Atlantic City Rescue Mission, as, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, we've been operating, this is our 57th year. Uh, what a lot of people don't understand or realize, they, they know of us, and they know perhaps our name is a little bit of a misnomer, our Atlantic City because we're the largest uh, emergency shelter of comprehensive services for the homeless and, and indigents in the community in the state of New Jersey. Uh, we serve Atlantic County for the most part, but we have uh, residents and people that come to for us for our services from over at least 11 counties in New Jersey and also the Philadelphia, uh, the greater Philadelphia metropolitan area. A lot of that is because uh, of our programs. Uh, I'll back up just a bit. For emergency shelter, and we're a division, uh, Department of um, Consumer Affairs officially designated emergency shelter, uh, we provide, of course, all the basic needs, uh, food, clothing, shelter uh, for the folks who are homeless and, and you know, don't know where the next meal is coming from or don't know where to go. That's our main focus as far as taking care of those, those individuals. But what really sets us apart is one, we're a Christian mission, as you mentioned. We believe that in, in guiding people back to uh, wholeness and to get on their feet, spirituality is extremely important and we share the Christian message. Now, having said that, and I've talked to some of our great colleagues uh, from different religious backgrounds, we don't proselytize or we don't turn away anyone. Uh, you don't have to be a Christian if you're in need. You know, we, we open up our doors and we don't turn anyone away. Uh, we share the Christian message. It's up to them if they'd like to accept or not. But we feel that that's a way of giving them inner strength and help and hope besides the basic needs that we do provide for. Um, and again, a lot of people think of us as a giant soup kitchen. And in some cases we are. We serve as many as 500 meals a day on an average. Uh, sometimes it goes up to 800 to 1500, depending on holidays and, and other times of the year. Uh, but our programs, as you mentioned just briefly again, uh, are really critically important. Everyone who comes to our door for help, we look to see what got them here in the first place. Now, if they're hungry, you know, whatnot, we'll take care of that first. But we register them. We have a chaplain who then interviews them to see what it is that got them to the Atlantic City Rescue Mission in the first place? Was it drug addiction, uh, alcoholism, uh, financial issues, uh, the, the whole abuse in the family, 
uh, mental health. There's a whole array of things that might have gotten them here in the first place. And, and the folks we serve come from a, a vast background of life, from nuclear physicists uh, who, who've come into a, a family problem to uh, folks that have just down and out and hard to keep a job. But our programs, what we do is we look to see what their needs are. And then we also have a great tap on hand for uh, state and local programs that we tie them into. We, in essence, customize a program for their health and, and, and wholeness and put them on a path to uh, recovery. One of the things that is important for us, too, is job readiness. Everyone who is here and about almost 90 percent of the folks that come in to our door uh, go into our programs. They are put uh, as soon as you know they're back on their feet a little bit health wise for sure. Uh, we put them into a work program. We want to make sure we can look to see and supervise what is their work ethic, what is their work uh, habits, do they take direction well? Yeah, then we have many things that you know, they can do here in our program, whether it's in our kitchen helping us provide preparation, serving all the meals, in our warehouse where we sort and distribute through the clothing that we're fortunate to be donated to us. Um, we have a thrift store which they also help that we, we put them in the work. The whole idea of that is to get them back into the workforce. Uh, we prepare them for interviewing and getting them back out on their feet. End result, whether they're here for six months, a year or two years, uh, is to get them into permanent housing. Every year uh, we put about 500 formerly homeless people into permanent housing, which is a little bit of a task in and of itself. Uh, one is to get them prepared to be able to afford it, but two, the other thing is that landlords out there may not be too excited about the background of folks coming out of this type of situation. We're very blessed and fortunate to have an individual who is uh, just a phenomenal miracle worker with the relationships she's established with uh, you know, various landlords. And they know the folks that come from here are well-schooled, they're, well, uh, they're well taken care of, and, and they're capable of putting into a, a rental situation or a purchase situation without you know, huge problems. Financial education is another thing that we do uh, through all that. So that, that was a long-winded uh, you know, reply to your question, but the mission does uh, so many things and we're so thrilled to be able to be reaching out to the homeless. And as I mentioned, we also have about 1,600 households in our uh, local community that we call the housed poor. These are people that live from paycheck to paycheck uh, in low-income housing, which is quite nice, but you know we want to be proactive and keep them from becoming homeless. Um, you know, those are the folks that, after, particularly with the pandemic, they had to make decisions: do we pay the rent, or we do do we get winter coats for the kids? Do we pay the rent, or do we put food on the table? And that's where, when they come to our mission uh, twice a month, we open our doors uh, for our wardrobe for them to pick out clothes. We have uh, tremendous. Uh, winter coat drives with a number of big uh, organizations uh, who, you know, do coats, uh, but they provide hundreds of coats to us. And, you know, the testimonials and stories were families, uh, the kids had coats that are like three sizes too small or no coats at all. Um, from babies to teenagers, you know, these families were blessed. Plus, we provide food baskets for them to help them uh, in between, as well as many of the kids get their morning breakfast here at the mission because they don't have the capability of having food at their home to properly nourish them. So it's a well-rounded program. It's, it's men again, the goal is to get people back on their feet, back into the community as full contributing members. And through it all, hopefully they, they have then experienced the, the, the hope and the presence of Christ through the workers here uh, who share and give to them based on the love and, and that we've been called to do for those who are poor and needy. Hmm. I'm just feeling in all the work that you do. And I, I can understand that you're doing so many different activities since it looks like you really have a holistic approach yeah. to make sure people become whole. And I, I really enjoy to hear that, that besides taking care of the basics, which I think, you know, is so necessary for someone to be able to yeah. take in new ideas and change their mindset. You are also, I think the spiritual part is so important, both because they can, you know, when someone is dealing with addiction, I think it's so useful to start looking at an, a higher power in some way. Mm -hmm. And I guess that can make them feel less lonely as well. And I guess loneliness is a big 
pain they're coming from if they maybe are homeless living on the streets so coming from that into a community and at the same time start to feel like they're contributing again i think you are really ticking a lot of the boxes on the needs that i imagine those people are having so i appreciate the work that you do and uh, a question in my mind then is Mm -hmm. like what are the biggest challenges that you are facing Uh, when you're doing this type of work Uh, is it you know that you don't have enough money is it that some people are maybe have too many issues to be able to fit in is it yeah what problems are you facing Mm -hmm. sure no very good question i appreciate the opportunity to share that you know we're blessed with tremendous support from the community in regards to clothing donations, uh, food donations, corporate uh, donations. You know, I I don't know if it's appropriate to mention corporate names, but there's some very large uh, popular uh, household names that are out there that really provide food to us on a daily basis that can feed, you know, 250 people for breakfast every day. You know, these are critical aspects. I mean, we do have to go out and purchase items that we don't, you know, when people donate, you don't get everything you need, but you get, you know, a good percentage of it. You ask about the problems. The the problem that we face, really, we're privately funded. We've been 100% privately funded since the day we opened in 1964. One of the reasons are is because we are a Christian mission. Uh, We do uh, take funds when they're available in regards to COVID relief and things like that, that we've been successful helping us. And it's great that many organizations, both corporate and government-wise have uh, reached out to help with grants for people facing the COVID. Because we our numbers, not so much from the homeless, it's interesting, but from the housed poor, really doubled during that period of time. Many lost jobs because the main industry in Atlantic City, the casinos were all closed for quite a, you know, a number of months. That's 30,000 people out of work. Uh, and for the city of Atlantic City, that's 50% of the population. Uh, so it's it's quite significant, and that's just the casinos. That's not counting the businesses, small businesses that supply to the casinos. That is their mainstay. So the ripple effect was quite dramatic. Many other organizations help, but for us, uh, you know, day to day to day, month to month, year to year, our biggest challenge is is the fundraising. Uh, and we have you know wonderful individuals that for 20, 30, 40 years have been consistently uh, donating to us. That's our, our, our backbone, our mainstay. Uh, we don't have a huge budget. As a matter of fact, uh, our CEO, who was on the board for 30 years and now running uh, the mission for the last 10, so he's got a great deal of experience. Coming from the business background, actually, when he was uh, on the board, he, he had two companies. Uh, he was in construction, had his own construction management company, which has come to be very uh, fortuitous for us because we can do a lot of things internally and he can train a lot of people to do things which ordinarily might cost quite a bit of money. And as well, he had an entertainment company. So he comes with great background experience in this to help us overcome you know, the, some of the shortfalls that might be there. But when we go out to the community looking for funds, um, we tell them we're frugal. We, every dollar that we have to spend, and we do have to spend some money, of course, but every dollar we spend is, is in essence, not a dollar we have to help someone in need. So we're very careful with doing that. Our budget's about three and a half million dollars. And what I was referring to, our CEO had had done a comparison, which we won't mention any names, but there's a a government supported uh, organization in the area that um, is fully government funded. They do less services than us, and they receive 30 and about $33 million a year from the state of New Jersey to operate. We operate uh, $30 million less <laughs> so, uh, and provide more service. So that's part of you know, what we're blessed to do and what our support from mostly individuals, uh, some corporations and foundations. But keeping up with that is, is, a, is a large task. You know, It's relationships, uh, but we look to the higher authority to help us. Uh, that people have a heart to help the poor. Jesus had said in the scriptures that the poor will always be with us and we need to we need to take care of them. We need to take care of our brothers and sisters and the children and uh, that we do. So we don't consider it a problem. It's an opportunity as I know a lot of management courses uh, espouse to you know turn the problem around and make it an opportunity as opposed to a challenge. Uh, so it is our opportunity, but we go out there and, and we work with it. Uh, coming into this past year was particularly uh, of concern, and then we lifted, of course, it up in prayer. 
Uh, when I first came on board on staff, I volunteered and was uh, doing some independent consulting for the mission for about four years with our CEO and with projects that indirectly affected the mission. But when I came on board, which he had said the board and he had you know asked if I could work with them more full time, and I said you know Dan uh, Dan Brown is his name, you know whatever the question is, the answer is yes. I, I feel this is the direction we need to go, and I'm more than happy to to work full time with with you on on this project. Um, the you know the aspect of doing that, I took a look at numbers, which I come from the business world as well, sales and marketing and operations before that, um, and I looked at our you know, the, the statistics over the years, I said, damn, what happened between 2015 and 2016? It looked like the bottom fell out. You know, donations dropped by about 50%. That, that's huge. That was one, you know, I thought maybe some big thing had, he said, yeah, two words, a ele- national election. Um, so coming into this year, we were like, oh, <laughs> if that mm-hmm. happened in 2016, maybe it's going to happen now. Then the pandemic hit and our expenses went up considerably. Uh, because one, we were well prepared to handle the pandemic only because of Dan's background and experience. My wife, um, who was very familiar because of Chinese uh, relations, um, was quite concerned in February, a little bit before most of the folks here in the States were, were getting too concerned. So she said, make sure you ask Dan if, if he's prepared. So I asked him and he handed me a 64 page uh, operations manual from the CDC on how to prepare and handle infectious diseases. The mission was so well prepared, and when things started to get, you know, to the degree of closures and everything else happening, uh, every day we we care for about a thousand indigents. That's whether they're in here in our programs or in the community needing our care. We've had zero positive cases all throughout this period of time, a miracle in and of itself. And that's nothing to do with me. That's all the operations team uh, doing the preparation and the protocol of delivery. But given that concern. Now we have a, a national election and a pandemic increasing our costs by probably about as much as $25,000 a month, which can add up quite a bit. So fortunately, the good news is now looking back, uh, the pandemic's still with us, uh, but nonetheless, we've been able to be flush for 2020. Um, that being said, you know, people stepped up. They didn't uh, leave us you know, in the lurch. And many different uh, corporations and state organizations had very special COVID relief uh, programs uh, aimed to help small businesses and, and nonprofits like ourselves, 501c3s, so that those monies helped. We were fortunate to be active in that area. So we ended the year as a nonprofit, you know, uh, okay. So, uh, but we never take it for granted. Like I said, when we talk to folks and we look to see about our expenses and our programs and how we can be better utilizing our funds, the key is every dollar we save is a dollar we can help someone in need. Makes me happy to hear you are doing well even in those challenging times. So we're starting to come up towards the end of this uh, this conversation. Mm-hmm. And imagine someone is listening now and uh, uh, they want to help out somehow to help the people you're trying to help, you know, sure. poor, homeless, or maybe poor people with houses or people with addictions and problems. And from your point of view, what can they do to help? Like obviously it would, I guess, be to donate to your organization, but maybe there is also some kind of action step they can do to be of use to their communities. Yeah. The first thing, and we, we, we get so many requests right now, and it's a bit of a shame because of the pandemic, but normal years we'll have as many as 1,600 different volunteers help us. That's individuals, corporations, there's a lot of corporate teams that like to come in. Some of our casinos, you know, will come draw on a dime you know, send 10, 20 people over if we've got a special event like Thanksgiving, where we feed um, 1,500 people here and another 1,600 people in the community. Uh, This is all great. But with the pandemic, we put that volunteer program on hold uh, because, you know, again, to protect them and to protect us. That was just something that we're still in that period. And again, it, it really helped. In a way, there's always a silver lining. Our work readiness program, the folks here that are clients, they stepped up and took the place of the volunteers. So that that worked out. So that is is something that's on hold. But donating clothing, primarily, I mean, that's something our folks, when they come here as homeless, and we have as many as 300 every day, families, 11 families, 18 children, uh, they come maybe with a backpack. And at the best, maybe a little rolling suitcase that would be a carry-on on an airplane. They need clothes. Uh, we, we get them ready for job interviews and clothes also make you feel good besides the 
uh, the Christian spiritual message, you know, it's important to feel good too. So that's a feel good, uh, getting that hope inside you, but also having nice clothes. So donating clothes to us is extremely important. Uh, that is something that can't be overstated. And as well, it goes not just to the homeless here, but to the house poor in our community. So kids can have a winter coat. So kids can wear shoes that, you know, that are appropriate as opposed to uh, something that, you know, wouldn't be healthy for them to be wearing. Other than that, donating, we have our website, uh, acrescuemission.org, A-C-R-E-S-C-U-E-M-I-S-S-I-O-N.org, acrescuemission.org. There's a Donate Now tab which, you know, you can choose to uh, support us in that capacity, whether it's on a monthly basis or individual or from time to time, as well as that um, clothing. We call it Operation Empty Closet. Uh, There's a link there that gives a map to all our satellite locations to drop off uh, clothing at or coming here to mission. Those are the key things. And I'll tell you the third thing is to tell others, tell your friends and your neighbors about us because we're, we're pretty well known, but at the end of the day, we could be better known. And our story and what we've shared and what you're helping us to share, Emil, um, is so important to get that word out. We're more than a giant soup kitchen. We're we're something that is working to get people back into the community in in a full and healthy way. And it's a great mission to be. And we love and we appreciate all the support. Beautiful. Bob, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. And um, I appreciate that you share awareness towards this holistic approach that involves both practical steps and the spirit. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. And for you listening, if you enjoy this conversation, press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app, because that is showing the algorithms that this is an important conversation. So more people can get inspired to start creating a holistic approach to get people back into society and feel whole. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode. What is great.com? That is the most common question that we get. And the shortest answer I can give you is that we are a company that is moving money from the online casino industry and donates it to charities that is helping the environment. The long answer, unfortunately, I don't have time to tell you today, but if you're curious, definitely Google what is great.com to learn more.